A few months back, I read a very powerful book called Awakening at Lords by Christy Wilkins. And she tells the story of her family's trip, or probably better say her, she and her husband's trip and their child, Oscar, to Lourdes. Now, Christy is a um, very faithful Catholic. She um, has, a, um, she has a, a blog site, and she um, also, as I mentioned, um, wrote a book. And she um, was, was a, had pretty much um, a very charmed life in some way. Not charmed, but she had a, a very nice life in the, um, with her family. And um, her youngest child at that time, um, Oscar, w uh, was born, and he was a beautiful baby. And they were th thrilled with new life in the family. They were, you know, um, really um, appreciating God's blessings. But soon after his birth, it was realized that Oscar had a seizure disability. And the seizures were very violent. And the seizures um, were uh, very serious. And the seizures were actually life-threatening. Well, naturally, some, a diagnosis such as this turned Christie's life upside down, as well as that of her husband and also her other children. And she did her best to manage a household, to manage um, care for the children, to manage all sorts of different things, while also at the same time trying to navigate the health system as far as um, Oscar's condition was concerned. It was suggested that Oscar um, make a trip to Rome, of course, with his parents. I'm, I'm, not, I'm sorry, not Rome, to Lourdes. And it was, um, they were going to go to the shrine um, where, Saint, where Mary appeared to St. Bernadette. And they were, were being taken there by the Knights of Malta, who that is a very special ministry that they have, bringing people to Lourdes um, for, for healing. And in many ways, the trip to Lourdes did not go exactly as they would have expected. Certainly many people were hoping that Oscar was going to be cured and that it would be a wonderful and beautiful spiritual experience. But it was not exactly a perfect experience as far as the healing was concerned, but it was a perfect experience as far as God's plan was concerned. Because while Oscar did not receive a physical healing, though after the trip his health did improve somewhat, what happened with Christy and her husband was very powerful. For Christy, she received a message from the Lord that yes, she had this cross to carry, and the cross was not going to mysteriously go away, but that he was going to be with her as she faced the, the different challenges that she faced. And for her husband, it was a time when he was renewed in his love for his wife and his children, his commitment to the marriage, his commitment especially to um, Oscar's needs. And it, was, it ended up being a time where their faith was strengthened, even though a miracle did not take place as far as physical he healing is concerned. But certainly, this trip to Lourdes was something that was, um, it was very meaningful for them and very powerful. And I was thinking about that as we are celebrating today, the Feast of Our Lady of Lourdes. And also as we hear the gospel that we have today on this feast, because in so many ways it fits, especially when we consider that our church also celebrates the World Day of the Sick on the same day as the Feast of Our Lady of Lourdes. And we have in our gospel, Jesus performing a miracle, a man who was unable to hear and unable to speak, has, is, um, at the end, has hear, hearing restored, and his speech impediment is removed. And what's interesting about the story is, first of all, we see Jesus not just saying some kind of a prayer, but actually taking action. And we also see this man, who certainly is in need of God's healing touch. But I think what's also important about the story is the fact that people brought this man to Jesus. There were people in his life who cared, people in his life who wanted the best for him, people in his life who wanted to make sure 
that if any, uh, there was any possibility of a healing, it was going to happen. And certainly that is what happens. But I think it also uh, has a powerful impact for us as we think about today. Because on the World Day of the Sick, we're certainly called to remember the sick and pray for the sick. But also, too, to see the needs of the sick. Those who are facing illnesses, those who have disabilities, those who have had a very serious diagnosis, are all people we remember today. And we pray, too, for those who care for them. All those involved in healthcare ministry, all those who care for the needs of the sick, whether they be medical professionals, support staff um, in hospitals, people who care for a loved one at home, the wide variety of ways that the sick are cared for, I remember today. And I think we certainly find in our gospel examples of all. So as we come together today, we pray for the sick, for those who care for the sick. But we also come together too on this Feast of Our Lady of Lords. And we have a wonderful example in St. Bernadette of someone who did love and care for the sick. She, after, her, after, she, after her apparitions uh, to, from Mary that she witnessed, St. Saint, Saint Bernadette um, ended, entered religious life. And for a good portion of her time in religious life, she worked in the infirmary, caring for those who were sick, though she herself was not somebody who was in the greatest health. But she trusted in the Lord's care for her, and she trusted that she could be the hands and feet of Christ, caring for others. So I think that as we come together today in this Feast of Our Lady of Lords and the World Day of the Sick, we're reminded of the importance of remembering the sick and keeping them in our prayers, serving them as best we can, honoring and remembering those who um, care for the sick professionally, and remembering, too, that when we do so, we are um, extending the love of Christ, and in many cases, we are his hands and feet in our world today.